All right, we start uh, today with a new topic, but let's say before, what have we done? Last time we talked about the rheology of uh, printing pastes, which means they are shear thinning and they have a thixotropic property with which the viscosity reduces with shear, but is a reversible process and can come back when the shear forces are removed. And some methods of measuring viscosity of printing paste, rotational viscometers like Brookfield or a ball fall method and the principle involved in the ball fall method. We will just spend some time today on uh, discharge and resist printing principles. Hmm. So, we are not going to be going into recipes and so on and so forth, just some of the principles. So, that helps you to formulate the strategy for doing a discharge printing or a resist printing. So, let us take discharge first. So, the principle is direct printing with discharge paste on a pre-dyed fabric. So, the color on the fabric is called the ground color and the ground color is to be discharged. The dyeing can be done in any method by any method whether it is an exhaust process or a pad dry process whatever you can use uh, any method for the dyeing is concerned. So, you can have wide discharge in which case your discharge paste has obviously discharging agent and maybe it is supported by some other inorganic systems compounds like zinc oxide, TiO2 or what have you, you can add them. If you look at the color discharge is also possible, but then you have two different types of dyes, one which is dischargeable dye which is on the fabric and another color which is called the illuminating color can be added to the discharge plate which is more resistant to discharge, right, the other principle. So, the discharging agent should it be an oxidizing agent or should it be a reducing agent? because we are quite familiar with bleaching agents which can in any uh, different different conditions can re remove colors that is how we work it out and reducing agents are the one which will act on a chromophore also to do the reduction. So, let us see if suppose we have dye which is dischargeable. What it means is that a dye for example, like an indigo can get converted to a compound which called isatin, which is an indole derivative. Now, you can see that the dye is not, not exactly the way it looked before and there is very difficult chance of it to going back to the indigo structure. So, if you can do that, you have no issues, but there may be some difficulty you see like it says that you are going to be using something like nitric acid and chromic acid which can give this compound. Or suppose tomorrow you decide to use another bleaching agent like hydrogen peroxide or nitrite, it is possible that you can get this. So, what are the difficulties? The difficulties will be that you cannot guarantee that the fabric is not going to be damaged. So, that is one major problem if you want to do go by the oxidation route. So, although 
if we logically look, oxidation could have been a better route because when you after discharge printing you leave the garments in whichever way they want, the general environment is an oxidizing environment. So, you do not have any danger of it getting back to its original color, but if you go by a reduction route and let us say some interesting things happen, then they can go back to the oxidized state because there is an oxidization possible in this environment. And you know that the wet dyes are generally oxidized in air also, you can oxidize chemically also, but you oxidize in air as well. And so, theoretically speaking, by reducing a dye, there may be a possibility of its coming back during use may not be exactly in the same quantities, but if white starts becoming greenish, yellowish with time you may not like it, all right. So, but still we prefer reduction as a process. Let us see if the same dye that means the indigo is reduced. So, we know that you can make a leuco dye. Now, this leuco dye theoretically has every at every opportunity it can go back to the structure. So, this difficulty remains. So, what do we do? Some suggestions could be that if this thing can be oxidized then what can we do? So, that is one important part. So, we can have application of something called a blocking agent and this blocking agent has got two parts, it is a nitrogenous compound. So, you can say it got a plus charge here and another part which is the C S 2 phenylene compound. So, in some ways if you can break this type of a compound which is in some sense ionic and can break and react and if it reacts with, if it is if it reacts with some of these groups then it will be difficult for this dye to get oxidized and go back to this. So, a reaction of this type is possible and so the other part of the compound would go out right. So, you can go by a reduction route on a wet kind of a molecule which could be indigoid or anthraquinonoid possible, but then you have to block. One important thing which also one has to realize is that the compound that you are getting does it have a color or it does not have a color all right. So, if we say that we first of all you must remember also that this indigo dye when it is reduced becomes a very pale color. But some of the anthraquinone dyes will be also deeply colored, they may not be that pale. So, one thing remains is does it go back to its original position or it also has a color left out at the end of reduction. In such a case you would be more interested in removing the dye right. So, this particular blocking agent was a water insoluble compound right. By itself also it makes some kind of a orange pigment when it reacts with the leuco part of the dye or the leuco dye. So, you have a issue unless and until you say well we are actually going for a color discharge. So, not too much of a problem, but if you want a white discharge 
then there can be a problem. So original color may be whatever, let's say it was a blue in the case of indigo, but after reacting with this kind of a blocking agent, you may get some yellowish orange compound which may also be sticking there. And so if you are going in for a color discharge, then you can say, well, this is the kind of color I'll get. But uh, if not, and if you are interested in white, then we can probably use the same compound, but also add some group like this, which will be able to solubilize the pigment. So it is the same compound. But if you add solubilizing group, then whatever forms can be washed off. So this is an alkali soluble pigment and so it can be then washed in alkaline conditions and you can remove this. And if you add other inorganic compounds like zinc oxide, in the discharge paste, then you can get better whites, which normally people may be doing. All right, so you have a blocking agent required so that the chances of the dye, if it remains going back to its original form, is restricted. If you add solubilizing group, you can wash it off also. So that is one part, that is it. Otherwise, it was a water insoluble compound which is difficult to do. So, what is the general wisdom? General wisdom when we will talk about discharge printing is that use azo based dyes rather than indigoid or anthraquinone based dyes for discharging. So, that is general. It is not that the other cannot be used, you can use it, but that making life more difficult. Because if this type, if this type of a azo dye is with us, then this can be reduced, let us say, in a reduction environment. And you will get a means and you can appreciate that combining these two amines back and making this is a very difficult process, all right. So if you are using azo based dyes and using a reduction environment then it will be very difficult for somebody to just oxidize it in a manner that it actually goes and makes an azo group. For making an azo group, what you require is a whole diazotization and then coupling with an naphthol, then only you can get back to that. So if you have an azo dyes, you have easy way to discharge and absolutely a confident way of looking that it is not going to go back to its own structure and so you will never get back the original color. So it will be just thing. If it can be washed, very good. Even if it cannot be washed, it will still not give you a problem, right. That means the basic chromophore has been destroyed. If it is a mono azo dye, then one will be destroyed. If it is a, you know, this azo or uh, multiple, you know, azo groups are there, all of them will get destroyed, there is nothing like a thing and if it becomes a smaller molecule, it can be washed off also. And the discharging or dischargeability of this group is much higher and that means if you want to use a color discharge, then you can use the other groups which are not easily dischargeable and then together they will get you. So 
as a base dies are the best as far as the discharge printing is concerned some examples so like the structure we make so what around the azo group the r could be aromatic and if it is an aromatic group there can be many other possibilities at the ortho positions on a para position of combination of various kinds of groups which could be larger groups like a group of this type large group or a small group here also you can have any type of group but for example if a group like this where you have two chlorines at the ortho positions it has been seen that the dischargeability of such type of dye is high and so that means people will talking about making a molecule of one type or the other and check up which is dischargeable more dischargeable or less dischargeable the one which is a dischargeability of let's say on a 1 to 5 scale 5 that generally very good for the ground maybe 4 to 5 also can work for the ground but if the dischargeability is towards 2 or 1 then you can use those type of dyes as illuminating colors right in this case the difference between uh, from the previous one is that there is there are two nitro groups in one and one nitro group in the other there is one halogen chlorine so between the two dyes which one do you think is going to be more dischargeable if there are two nitro groups it becomes more difficult to discharge despite one halogen so it's a relative a bit of a steric conditions also are created here and so this dye compared to this structure will be more dischargeable these dyes if somebody wants to know which kind of class they belong to direct reactive acid disperse there is no anionic group here there is no reactive group here and so if the x is another nitro another ch2 another ch3 so this will be more close to dispersed dyes so if a similar thing has to have uh, you know has to be an acid dye for let's say nylon or wool or silk in this case you would be adding such groups so if you can add such groups then you can think of an acid dye but it still has the most important chromophore azo which can be discharged so this is some interesting lesson that we have when we talk about dischargeable reactives generally azo groups may not be found in most of the reactive dyes but if there is an azo group yes you can break that but from the reactive group point of view people prefer vinyl sulfone based reactive dyes because if there is no azo group like in this dye there is no azo group it's a reactive blue if suppose this group reactive group was procyon you had difficulty but if it is a vinyl sulfone this reactive group linkage with the cellulose can be broken so dye can just be washed off right and therefore on the ground people will like to use vinyl sulfone based dyes because the dye otherwise is reactive tomorrow if somebody wants to know a reactive dye 
dyed fabric is there with you, but you don't know whether it's an azo group or it's a anthraquinonoid group. And somebody wants to do a simple asks you to do a simple experiment to determine which dye, which group, which chromophore is present. Then what do you do? It's a reactive group, reactive dye, and you are looking at which whether anthraquinone based or an azo based dye is there. Think about it. So, this is an example of the reactive dye with an azo group, and this is also bifunctional reactive dye. So, theoretically, it is possible that you can have a breakdown here. So, in case instead of vinyl sulfone group, you had a trichlorotriazine, dichloro or a monochlorotriazine it can still be reduced, right. But if this is the type of a dye, then this type of a mechanism is available with you, okay. So, people will prefer vinyl sulfone based, so this is a bifunctional dye, but again bifunctional vinyl sulfone dye. It may have as a group, may not have as a group. So, if it has an azo group, it is okay. So, the both the mechanisms are available. So, dye can be destroyed. In the other case, the reactive group can be broken and then you can still have clear discharging possibilities. On the other hand, if you look at the discharge resistant dyes, they definitely should not be azo, should not be azo, that is one. But they can be anthraquinonoid, thalocyanin, triphenylmethane, which are could be cationic dyes based on what fabric dye combination we are using. So, some of the structures can be of this type. So, they will be discharge resistant dyes. Among the reducing agents, uh, we have been using for the bad dyeing, for example, sulfoxylate formaldehyde based reaging, reactive agent, reducing agents, but they have to be for printing, they have to be stabilized. So, they could be instead of sodium salt, they could be zinc salt. Some people talked about calcium salt, salt but zinc is popular. So, there will be some stabilized because during this paste which is going to be stored for a long time, the reaction should not take place. This reaction should take place only when you are doing fixation and going for steaming or baking, where this must act. In steaming conditions, an important thing also happens is that the whole environment around that can also become reducing environment. So, the ground where you do not want the discharge to take place around that also something can happen. So, people sometimes use mild reducing, mild oxidizing agent, all right, a resist salt. Have you heard of that? So, you may use a resist salt to counter the general reducing environment and make sure the other colors are not affected. In some cases, people use thiourea dioxide also in some protein like silk discharge printing, you may like to use tennis chloride also. So, one has to do uh, the discharge printing with little more care whenever you are using protein fibers, but you can do this. Synthetic fibers also like polyester for example, you want to discharge, it is not easy to discharge. The most of our agents are working in aqueous medium and polyester being polyester and dye goes inside and then reducing agent can work on the surface, but 
difficult for it to penetrate so much and so the results normally are not so good. If you can't compare, I mean generally the all hydrophilic fibers, cotton, viscose, silk, nylon, uh, their results are better and polyester is difficult. So there is another style which is typical for hydrophobic fibers which is called a discharge resist style. What it means basically is that the fabric has not been dyed and fixed. So, in the earlier case what we said that you can dye either by exhaust method or you can dye by pad cure method, pad thermosol method and then want to do this. Let us say you do pad thermosol for polyester and want to do discharge, it is tough. So, one of the things which people have said is do not fix the dye that you can pad the fabric with whatever dye that you want on the ground, dry it and then print, dry, fix. So, you pad with dischargeable Add with dischargeable dye, then dry, just dry, not fix, then print, discharge paste, then dry and then fix and of course you will wash. Now what happens is that because it has not been fixed and there is a discharge paste which means it is about discharging agent. So, it is like a resist not allowing it the dye to be there, but it is a resist because of this and the discharge because the color is all over which is being discharged. All right. So, even if there is a color here at this point where you have put a paste, this is the design where there is a discharge paste, here the dye is going to be discharged before it has been fixed. So, that is how people have handled the difficulty levels in the polyester. So, you do not allow the dye to diffuse at all. So, much before the dye has diffused, it has not diffused here. So, during the fixation process, the one which is here will get discharged anyway and will become a different kind of product maybe and then it will not be washed. It can be washed and you can remove that. And so, we call this as a discharge resist style of printing, right. So, it is an interesting style. So, it has got combination of both. So, something on resist printing, again just little principles. How is it different? Is it in the end results? The end results in some cases may be different, but most of it, it may be similar. Because in this case, the advantage that you have is that you are not allowing the fixation to take place. So, that way finer prints, fine lines, etcetera, you can do uh, with the resist printing. In the process, of course, there is a difference you are first printing and then you know putting the dye all over. Some advantage people may think here is because if you have a discharge printing in a very dark color, the discharge paste almost is colorless 
and if you have a color discharge kind of environment or otherwise you are trying to make different designs and different portions, sometimes very difficult to locate where the actual print is and if the machine is running at a fast speed, if there is some fault cycling somewhere, it will be difficult to say whether a right printing has occurred or not. In this case, that is not there. It is just like first you are printing on a white ground. If you are printing on a white ground, even a light pale thing is visible. And a light pale color is not visible on a dark ground. So, sometimes they have difficulty in putting one design over the top of the other. So, that is it. The process obviously is different. First print and then put the whole thing called dye, dischargeable dye. Is it different in the class of dyes? Actually, no. All the dyes which can be used for discharge printing can be used for resist printing as well. Some of the things which resist can do, discharge could not have done. Here also, whether you will like destruction of color or not would depend on what method you are using. In the other case, you had to do something to destroy the color. Here you can have some possibilities of without destroying the color, you can get the effect. And that is what basically we are looking. So, there is a possibility of a mechanical resist process where you are not allowing it to penetrate and therefore, it will not go to the fiber. Other obviously is chemical where if discharge is required, it can be done or you may not allow it to get fixed. If a particular dye requires alkaline medium, then in a discharge paste you can have an acid. And so, if done nothing to the dye, but still cannot go in. If it requires a reducing environment to get diffused and fine, you put an oxidizing environment there and vice versa. All right. And theoretically, therefore, in this sense, this will be different. You, without destroying the dye also, you can get a color or a design of one kind or the other. But if it is required to be destroyed, so it will destroy it also. Some things that you are quite familiar with happen to be tie, dye and batik kind of things which are mechanical resist and beautiful effects are obtained by these processes. So, if the ground is reactive, then you can use acid in the discharge. If you have wet type of environment, then you have oxidizing agents. If oxidation colors, then you have reducing agents. If you have azoics, not azo, then what do you do? So, it is slightly more complex because you may have padded your fabric with naphthol and then added a diazotizing uh, diazonium salt or a stabilized diazonium salt. All right. So, what do we do? Not so difficult. Think about it. All right. Think about it. So, if you want to use mechanical resist along with it, no problem. It will also, particularly when you want to get more white, then you may actually have the whitening agents of this kind also as, as part of the resist paste. Again, in case of let us say pigment printing, we wanted low solids, very low solids, so that you know it does not get retained in the film. But here we want this material also to be acting like a resist in some way. So, because the dye is going to be on top of this, diffusion should be made as difficult as possible. So, people say well high solid type of thickeners could be give better results on the resist printing. Finally, we have done the printing. And after that, we have to do the dyeing. Which dyeing method 
would we like to use after printing? Right? This is after printing. So we have done the printing, drying, and then we have to put the dye. First of all, do you understand all these methods? Right? Exhaust dyeing, you understand? So would you like to do exhaust dyeing after printing? So this is not the method which can be used. Dip nip padding can you use? No? So this also cannot be used. Nip padding, what is the nip padding? So the fabric is not dipping, but it is just in the nip. For example, you can have one roller another roller and the roller may be dipping. You can have a, it is like kiss roll technique and then the fabric goes like this, a printed fabric and then whatever dye that you want to put is, uh, goes on to the fabric and then you for dry and fix. That is nip padding. So, dye is still in solution, right. So, you can use whatever you want to use. The other method is over printing. So, this can be used, people use. Over printing is that means if you have a roller printing machine, then after printing the final color which is a dischargeable paste is being put on the surface by a roller which has engraving all over. Or if you are going for a screen printing, then you have a blank screen with which you can print and this would mean that the first print will not be destroyed. That means theoretically you print the design, follow it in a rotary print by a blank print and then just go through and you will get something interesting after drying and fixing. So to get the best results, over printing is the technique in the resist system. Exhaust means there is going to be agitation in solution while you have just printed and you just dried and you are hoping that the print whichever the print remains in the position in which the design is and if you find that this leaves its place and goes everywhere else then there is a problem. Similarly, you are talking about dip. So, you actually go through the solution. In the dip situation, you have padding mangle kind of a process. So, the fabric which has been printed can go like this or any threading sequence. Now in such case, the dipping in a solution, you may not like it because it is too much of a solution and it becomes softer. The print print portion also becomes softer and wet. Then in this squeezing, many things can happen which you may not like. So if you do resist, the printed portion has to be protected the design has to be protected and that is what uh, is the more difficult part of it and therefore people may say well I will go for a discharge, dying is easy at least, do not have to 
do too much of a thought except selection of a die. You just select the right kind of a die, die it the way you want to die and then go for a discharge printing, relatively easy. In this case, it is slightly difficult, but you can get best results. Now, how do you choose is your economy and your method and your way of looking at a life? So, economy is also one part of this because this overprinting is a bad side we are not printed the anything else because nowadays we are using the bed seats are there, back side is become white. Right. So, if that is the best part you can have. So, if you die, the back dye means all the sides, all the fibers, all the yarns have been uniformly dyed and you are trying to remove now from one side. Now, in other cases that the you have printed everything, but in a different way. Theoretically, somebody can say, well, that is very nice thing. I will directly do a direct printing also. A big blotch, the small blotch, everything else I will print. But compared to that, the resist will be a better idea. You know, it can be done continuously also. So, I think we stop here and what we have uh, learnt is that azo based dyes are better for the ground. In case of reactive dyes, you may like to go for vinyl sulfone based dyes. If you want to go for discharge printing of polyester, then it is the discharge resist style is a better one and in the resist printing, if you are looking at a chemical resist, it will be better that we go for overprinting. That would probably give the sharper designs at the end of the day. Thank you.